Mrs. Angela Coffey from the community of Biosh has joined the elite group of centenarians in Dominica. We are having a conversation with Mrs. Coffey. Mrs. Coffey, how are you today? Well, I'm feeling fine. Praise God, I am alive and well today. Okay, and mm. how does it feel to be a hundred? How I feel to be a hundred? Yes. I feel extra good. I feel happy because I never thought I would reach a hundred. And when the hundred days come, came, I was so, I was so happy. I did not even know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm feeling, I know it's my creator, the God above that helped me to live a hundred years without any problem, without any sickness. I still have my sight and everything. So I'm happy, I'm happy, and I'm praising God, and I will continue to praise Him until He called me home. Okay, but when you were young, mm -hmm. tell me what was it like for you? Ah, well, the life for me when I was young, I I with my mom, mm -hmm. and then I go to school. My mom sent me to school, and then after school, I did seven standard. Okay. That was the highest we could reach. They, they, they didn't have anything like college and these things. We didn't have, we didn't have that. When you reach seven standard, you would get any big job. Okay. Seven standard. Mm -hmm. When I reached seven standard, my mom asked me what I would like to be. I told him I would like to be a seamstress. So she bought me a machine. And I started to do my little thing. But I was not nobody to teach me. Mm -hmm. So, but I was doing my little thing in my own way. Mm -hmm. But anyway, when Mrs. Boyd, as the Boyd, she had married to one of the Boyd, came down to Dublin to spend time with her auntie. I went, to, I went there to make a telephone call for they were the only person with a phone. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, not like today, everybody have a cell phone. <laughs> and, but that time it was only Mr. Schillingford, Howell Schillingford, that have had a phone in Jubla. Okay. So I went there to meet her, and she <laughs> fell in love with me. And she asked my mother whether she would like to send me to live with her in Roseau okay. and learn to sew. So my mother, did, my mother didn't want to, as, my, as, her, as her first daughter, she didn't want to move me away from her. Mm -hmm. But I said, I wanted to learn to sew, and she's a top seamstress. So I said, I'm going. I went and I stayed with my boy all like 12 years sewing in Roseau. Nearly everybody in Roseau know me as my coffee and sister coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I stayed there, I learned to sew. That is the time I got engaged to my husband. I got married. She made my wedding dress and everything for me. Mm -hmm. And I go and still live in Roseau. So I live more in Roseau than I live here, but I was born here. Okay. I live more in Roseau than I live in Biosh. And it's after a certain time, my husband was working with our government, and he had a bad knee, so he was medically bored. Okay. And then I had to come down here, and, and my mother was, my mommy was still alive. So my mother and myself, my two, my, my two other sisters, one was in Salisbury, married to Mr. Green Shillingford, okay. and my other sister went to England. So it was my mother my, and myself and my husband living here on, until I had two children. Okay. But I, I left here and I went to Roseau. And I had two children in Roseau, and the last child I had, I had it here. And from that, I am living here. But I stay in Roseau a long time, more than 15 years. I stay in Roseau okay. after I got married. And then you had your, how many children you had? Three. Three. I have two daughters and one son, but my son died lips and coffee. They used to call him Prince. Oh, okay. He died last year. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, so but I have two daughters. One is a nurse in Bermuda, and the other one is working in States. In States. Mm. At what age did you stop sewing? Well, I stopped sewing when I was um, when I was uh, around 50, 50, 60 years old, so, because I was here and I opened a shop. Okay. So I was more or less in the, <laughs> in the shop business. I would do a little sewing, but not as before. But I was more or less in the, um, the shop business. 
Okay. So what do you do every day? Well, I used to have maid. So I was not washing and these things. But at that time, things, things get tight. <laughs> I, I had to do it myself. <laughs> you understand? Yes. I had to do it myself. And then I, I still had the shop. And after I finished the shop, my husband was a was a agricultural man. He was working with government agriculture, but he was medically bored, as I told you. Yeah. So he was there, mm -hmm. and the estate is there, so he was working the estate. So I used to go up garden with him. When he had people working with him, I used to go up garden, mm -hmm. and then doing my little sewing, having my little shop. When I come in the evening, I opening my shop. So I was feeling quite satisfied, quite content with life. Okay. So do you go to church? Yes, I am a Christian in the, in the Pentecostal church. Okay. I got baptized, my husband too. So we were two Christian in the Pentecostal church and I'm still here. That is where I do all my celebration for my hundred years. So you still go to church? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're still strong, still moving about. Yeah. So you walk about in the village? No. Uh, we have a church up there. When, you, when you're going back, you will see where that Mark Pentecostal church, uh, uh, the board is on by the road, mm -hmm. by the roadside. Mm -hmm. And then I had the, I had the big business, you know, uh, the big business now, happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> I had it down there. Okay. Uh, plenty of people were there, you know, the prime minister had to be there, but he had to go, he, had, he was in, um, he was oh, in the House of Assembly. Mm -hmm. So you enjoyed yourself at that celebration? His wife came to see me since after that. Okay. Mm. So you enjoyed yourself for your birthday? Yeah, oh, yes. I enjoyed myself very well. Mm -hmm. I was even dancing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So can you tell me a little about Biosh, how Biosh was back then and how Biosh is now? Oh, there's a big change in Biosh. At the time I brought up in Biosh, even that house was not like that. That house was in wood, covered with shingles, and so on. Mm -hmm. And all the, all the other houses was just the same. Wood, covered with shingles, nothing like galvanage, mm -hmm. nothing like painting. People couldn't afford to do that. But right now, God has blessed Dominica a lot. Everywhere in Dominica you pass, you seeing a change. Mm -hmm. God bless Dominica. Some people don't thank God, they are not still satisfied. Some people are not still satisfied, but I'm telling you that God has blessed Dominica tremendously. Mm -hmm. So would you be able to tell me some of the changes you have seen in the country? Like how some of the things were before and how they are now? Like in terms of our roads, our airports? Would you remember how these things are? Yeah, but <laughs> people used to travel on small boat, not even steamer that was coming to Dominica. I can remember when the first plane came to Dominica. I was a young child, about 10 years, or even, even, even uh, 10 years, around 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then when they called Mr. Howell Schillingford and tell him that the plane will be passing at certain hour, nobody go get him. Everybody <laughs> stay to see the plane. <laughs> I can remember a small, small plane passed right up. They saying it will fall. People saying, boom, <laughs> it will fall. But the plane knows <laughs> the plane passed. First time, first time they see a plane Dominic. I saw it for the first time. Just passed like a little bird. Mm -hmm. And the roads. And tell me about the roads. Oh, we didn't have a road. I, worked, I used to walk from here to Kolehu by land to go to church. If not, I we take boats and we go. Nothing like that. When I had my shop, church, my shop, I used to bring my things to St. Joseph's on truck, on truck, and then the boat come on St. Joseph to take the things to bring down here for me. But right now, all about our food, you see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People don't travel with uh, in on boat again. Everybody, when I go to Rozo, Two people that had transport was gay, no coffee. I can remember things, eh? Was <laughs> gay, no coffee, and another man. Two of them alone that had transport. 
Mm -hmm. Here, nobody, the people didn't know about transport, it's just like Marigot, nobody didn't know about transport. At my time, nobody, everything was boot. Everything was boot. Boot, or take your walk. Everything was boot, or you have to walk. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, tell me some of the things you eat in. What I used to eat. What you eat, yes. Oh, <laughs> I will, don't laugh, eh? <laughs> uh, bread, bread was... Um, like on Sunday, we having either bread or bakes. Mama used to bake the bakes <laughs> and bread and like oil. So what we used to fry the bakes with was coconut oil. They reject coconut oil. But right now, everything is a coconut oil now. Mm -hmm. But we used to grate coconut, squeeze it, get the juice and boil it and make oil. And that, that oil is the oil we used to fry bakes with. Mm -hmm. And then I, we used to have bakes, cocoa, roots cocoa, and then roots plantain. Roots, we didn't have nothing like fridge. At my time, nobody had a fridge. Nobody had a fridge. And the first set of fridge that come to Dominica is kerosene fridge. Mm. Kerosene fridge. Kerosene fridge, you have to pour. Oh. They have a special kerosene for the fridge. Because when I bought one for my shop, it's a, a small kerosene fridge I bought. Okay. You understand? I never knew that. It, things was, I things never was knew not that. like today. I never knew I that. I tell you, seven standard children used to, when you reach seven standard, you do get any job. So but right now, seven standard don't work for nothing. It's when you go to college, then college to university. Mm -hmm. But people, people that die don't know nothing about university, neither college. Yeah. So you all used to have kerosene fridge? Kerosene fridge, mm -hmm. yes. Kerosene fridge we used to have. Wow. <laughs> you buy the kerosene and you put it, <laughs> and you light your fridge, and you, there's something you have to do if the fridge is smoking. Smoke, turn out smoke, you have to clean it up. It's dirty, so you clean it up. You know, mm -hmm. but it's scheduled. Are you? I had one. Okay, and so so tell me some more things. What you used to eat before? What I do? Kako tea. You used to drink kako tea. I well, <laughs> I'm telling you, like our breakfast, mm -hmm. our breakfast in the morning we roast kokoi, we roast plantain, we have cocoa tea. But one thing, my father used to have a um, um a lot of cows, so we had cows milk, okay. and then you have a you have a not glass now. Have a cup. <laughs> <laughs> Not nothing like glass. Glass. <laughs> if you have a glass or two glasses, it's for when stranger come. Children don't. Children don't drink in that. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have cocoa tea. When you drink your cocoa tea with cow's milk, and you have your roots plantain or roots cocoi or roots breadfruit, breadfruit, breadfruit. Mm -hmm. used to go that. <laughs> <laughs> then we never used to have well with us here is the fish from the from the sea to the pot mm -hmm. so nothing like going on fish we don't have fish it's from the sea to the pot and every day is fresh fish and you're getting about two pounds <laughs> I bought the, these days are, are gone you're getting about two pounds of fish for, for not even five dollars, for three dollars, for two dollars, you know. True. Children passing with the, with the thing of fish and asking if you are not buying. But right now, if you haven't got eight dollars, nine dollars, you cannot eat fish. <laughs> okay. So, Makofi, tell me, you ever traveled? <laughs> I have been to England six times. I travel a lot because I have an adopted daughter. She sent for me. The first time, and then she sent for me a second time, and then my children start to work, and I things start to improve with me. I, so I start to travel. <laughs> I travel. I go to England six times. I went to Bermuda three times. I went to America three times. I went to Saint Martin four times. I went to Guadeloupe, and I didn't travel other places. You These are the places I travel to. You remember all that? Yeah. <laughs> I doesn't forget things. Well, at my time, all we had to do was corn the fish, smoke it like the cocky barbecue. But we didn't know it as barbecue, not smoked fish. <laughs> 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 smoked fish, and then you take the smoked fish, 
you put it to boil and you, you grate your coconut. You take the juice of the coconut, you pour it in it and your butter and your thing and everyone. <laughs> oh, food before was nicer than food today, you know. You say food no? today is chicken and chicken and chicken and chicken. <laughs> but our food, our food before was nicer. Yes. You used to enjoy it more. Huh? You used to enjoy the food more. Yeah, well, I enjoy it because it's that I have. <laughs> <laughs> so but our food before was nice. So what you eating now? What are you eating now? Like Sunday. Sunday, I eating chicken, any meat that come, I don't choose. Any meat, chicken, pork, anyone that come, I eat meat. But Tuesday, Monday, Sunday, Monday, we will eat the rest over. We cook enough food on Sunday so that Monday we haven't got to go to the to cook again. Okay. Tuesday, I eat kalaloo. You know what is kalaloo? I know what is the kalaloo. Dashing. Some people, some people buy the dashin, but what they should buy when they buy the dashin? Ask the people to what about the chair? Bring the chair for me next <laughs> next Saturday. Like when you're coming. Yes, because the chair dashing worth you more than the dashing that itself. The dashing is only starch. Mm -hmm. But the, the chair dashing, the chair dashing, when you make color with chair dashing, you, 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 you have some iron, you get some iron from the chair dashing. You got other things from the chair dashing. The chair dashing is very good to eat. You just cut your chair dashing or you cut it. Well, if it's got too big, you put it in your thing. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And you means it up chadashin and if you have if you have smoke smoke meat you put a little smoke meat in it you put your tanya or your fig you cut it in three you put your tanya you cut your tanya small and you have a nice lunch okay so on that tuesdays it on tuesday okay uh, wednesday is fish thursday is fish no thursday is soup we're making soup we're taking peas Everything we're making a soup. And then Friday we don't cook. Friday don't, we don't cook here at all on Friday. I don't <laughs> know for other people, but on Friday is the day we have to clean. Clean. You still clean? Yes, clean the I helping to clean. You still clean? Yes. I helping. I making my bed, I doing everything. I want I take you to see my bed for how I make it. I making my bed, I do my thing, I I putting things in order. If my clothes, I hang clothes, I pull clothes, I do that. I do a lot of work. I sweep my, it's only of late I stop sweeping my yard. I have somebody sweeping my yard for me. I have three people that I appreciate plenty and they are Sister Luvin Fogus. Sister Luvin Fogus. I love her just as I love my three children. Because if my food is not ready, and I feel hungry, I just called her and she bring lunch for me. Or if Tracy is going somewhere, she don't have time to cook my food and leave for me, she just ask her to send lunch for me. And I have a, a gentleman that sing about my yard for me. We she have a nickname, we calling her Becky, but her right name is Morris. She sing about my yard, I haven't got to tell her when to come and clean the yard. She knows when to come and clean it. And you don't see the other one, you pass it. Clean. clean. Very clean. And I have a lady who come all the way from Dubla to comb my hair and to wash my hair for me, Rosalind. She come all the way, every two days, she coming and comb my hair and wash my hair for me. I have two persons I appreciate a lot. It's my son-in-law, Roosevelt, Maroney, married to my daughter, and Alicia Coffey married to my son who died, they, they, they take care of me. And I don't check my children taking care of me. I'm well taking care of my children. They're calling me every day. Every day, my two children overseas calling me. And I have some grandchildren that love me. You should know mm -hmm. Kathleen Coffin. Yes, yes. Well, she's my granddaughter. Okay. Mm -hmm. ah, well, she, she, she's a love, a love granddaughter to me. I have a coon, he's a love grandson to me. I, my grandchildren, all of them, I haven't got to check them because too many time will waste. 
I have some children, some people on my sister on my sister's side in Monrachet, the Paul, the Paul family in Monrachet. Oh, you have family in yeah. Monrachet? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Doreen Paul and these people, you know. Mm -hmm. ah, well, they, they're taking good care of me. They are, they are coming right here to see me. They, all of them was in my set. I <laughs> call it my set. <laughs> all of them was in my set. Okay. Ali is the man for me. <laughs> I love him. I love him because he's my companion. In the Tracy sleeps downstairs, but all in the morning Tracy will come and see about me. But Ali see about me before Tracy. If I'm dead, Ali will call Tracy and tell Tracy, Mama passed away. You understand? Yes. So I would be sorry if his name don't call. Okay. Yeah. What advice would you give your people? Advice, mon cabal, you m'as dit que tu as un pas toi pour y comprendre bien. Adam, mon cabal, comprend anglais. Passe moi, because I mean I didn't go to high school. Tu anglais moi, tu t'as que neg. But mon cabal dit anglais, mon cabal dit pas toi. Avec mon cabal, you advice I can give them. Come closer to God. That is one. Come closer to God on a Sunday before they stay and move about. Get a church of your choice and come and hear the word of God. Hearing the word of God, you will hearing the word of God, you will surrender your life to him and it will be better for you. Because God loves his children, but you must show him love too. God loves his children, but you must show him love too. He got no going to send, spend all his love on you, and you're not showing not an inch of love. Sure. So before you stay on the street and roam up, we don't see how they're killing people now. You're staying on the street and roam about, roam about, roam about on the street. You roam about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at least you should get a house of worship. Sunday you should go to a house of worship. I don't know what people are doing, eh? but I'm telling you, seek God. Seek God for yourself, and he will seek you too. Mm -hmm. If you don't care about God, God don't need you, you know. You don't need God. Huh? You don't agree with me? <laughs> God don't need us. It's we that need him. So if you seek God, God will seek you too. It's true. So, God, you are part of too? Eh, mon I tell you, Dimash Vini, on Dimash qui parle, Pierre Stravaille pour faire encore, ou pas ça, mon temps, hôtel Dimash, ou pas ça, faire pain Dimash, ou pas ça, faire rien Dimash, hôtel qui m'a fait appeler Dimash Vini. Si vous êtes samedi, vous répondez samedi, mais si vous êtes aidé, vous répondez Dimash. Si vous êtes samedi, vous répondez samedi, pourquoi Mais si vous êtes aidé, vous répondez bien sûr, vous répondez à travail, tout le monde, vous répondez aidé, vous répondez à l'église. Most of the church, even the Catholic church, staying empty. Most of the church staying empty on a Sunday. Why? Everybody fetting. They are fetting, they are fetting. You don't see what is happening? Sani, piche ou ou mo. Coupe kou ou mo. Wani ale, yokani ale ve la vie moun. Ava pa teni sa, no? Pa teni sa, pe sa va. Mon ka chanje le yon, nom chwe yon moun. Tout moun he le, eh. On va me dire blanche, on blanche qui te tue yon moun. Pour une fois, yon te tante moun, te tue moun Dominic. Moun pas de ka tue moun. Tout moun te satisfait, satisfied of their life. And it's a good thing to, you feel contented with what God bless you with. And you will get more if you feel contented with what God bless you with. But if you are dissatisfied, God bless that man so much, and he don't bless me. What you have, what you doing? You planning to kill him? You don't care if you die, but you put him, cut his neck and take him away because he has too much. They're even blaming God and telling God giving some people too much and not to give them. Some of them blaming God, you know. It's true. Hmm? It's true. It's true. It's true. Because if you are not satisfied, it's God you're blaming. Because God is the giver. 
if you are not satisfied with your, with your present position, you're blaming God because God is the giver. But if you are sub, sa satisfied with what you have, just wait. Good things come to those who wait. Wait and good things will come to you. God will open a door for you. God will bless you. But if you are not satisfied, all you do is to kill somebody because you are not satisfied and that person is prospering and you cannot prosper. God mm -hmm. On est l'année pour aller, oui. Moi, je suis l'année pour aller. C'est quoi encore? Yes, five years. <laughs> you joking. But ça vous confesse, c'est ça vous qui tape. What you confess, that's what you'll get. If I confess, so make it easy, non? Moi, je suis l'année pour aller. Mon Dieu, ben, moi, on doit bien se mettre à aller. Moi, quand j'en sais, t'allais, moi, qu'aller. T'allais, moi, qu'aller. But if I confess, I might not live the five years, but I might live three years. But I'm not going to confess that I'm going to die now. It's true. Well, I have, I have no complaint. God blessed me with health. He blessed me with strength. He blessed me with my sight. I can read without glasses. I don't have to. That is not glasses. That's what I say. Look at here, you know. Look at here, um. Look at the. Look at here, you know. But how they call that thing? Reading glasses. Eh? Reading glasses. Eh? Reading glasses. Linet pulley. Eh? Linette Pouli. Linette Pouli, yeah. <laughs> that is to read. Yeah. But take a book, take my Bible for me. Let, me, let them see that I can read without that. <laughs> I read without my, my, my glasses. It's just because I get an thing in my eyes. So I put in that. I, I don't wear glasses. glasses. So you bless. I, I have strength. I go up. That's it. They're asking me if I'm going up big step. I run in my step and I'm running down. I'm running my step. That's not the book I tell you to take for me, but you take it. But Bible, you tell her. That one is small, small screen. Take my big Bible for me. My <laughs> coffee, you have a joke. <laughs> uh, you're laughing at me. Yes. At my joke. I enjoy the conversation. Enjoy it. Yes. Uh, and you will see how I'm reading. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. When you have that, what you need? You need a Bible now. <laughs> uh, I mean, in Psalms 91. To everything there is a season, hmm? and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to, to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Just now I finish with a time, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit have he that worketh in that wherein he endureth, I have seen the travail which God has given to the Son of Man, and be exercised in it. Praise the Lord. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalms 91. Okay. I will say of the Lord, you are my rock and my fortress, and in you whom I trust. You shall give your angels charge over me to keep me in all your ways so that no weapon formed against me will prosper. And every lying tongue in judgment I will condemn in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay. <laughs> well, coffee, it was nice speaking with you. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> you must really come and see me at any day. <laughs> no problem. No day problem. <laughs> You are viewing a yes, conversation uh, with Mrs. Angela Coffey, one of Dominica's newest centenarians. Thanks for viewing.